Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're thinking about the zombie apocalypse. Don't deny it. We've all thought about what would happen if we were in a zombie apocalypse or in some sort of apocalypse where it's like the world goes back down to zero or the whole world gets taken over by zombies. Like we've all thought about it. We've all thought about, had these feelings and ideas of like, what can I do? What what would I be willing to do? What can I use to protect myself? Is there anything I can use to protect, to protect myself? Man, I'm stumbling over my words. Now, the reason I think about this more often these days is because, you know, it doesn't help that I've been watching the rewatching the The Walking Dead and um, also because I've been watching uh, playing The Walking Dead, the Telltale series on my gaming channel. So get, definitely give that a check. Check it out if you have the time. It's a uh, big silly goose gaming. But anyways, I remember I remember very little about the beginning of like the zombie apocalypse. Like when I first, I like I knew what zombies were because of Halloween and stuff. Like they would sell these costumes and Scooby Doo kind of had like that zombie movie and whatnot. Like it was always kind of the idea that like yeah, zombies are are bad, but they're nothing that can't be dealt with, right? But then all of a sudden, I was watching. I don't remember what. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember the exact year or like when, but I remember zombies were like a huge, huge deal. They were coming out with that. There was The Walking Dead, and then they had World War Z, and then they had like all of these movies kept on lining up with like zombie, 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 right? It's like the dead, the dead, the dead are coming for you. So for me, I was always kind of like, I always got a little bit of hope, you know what I mean? Because it's like, it's not anything that can't be faced, you know? It's it's not like we can't win against them. It's more so that, like, the sheer number of them and, like, how many people get infected and whatnot, it's just, like, it, it causes problems, essentially. Anyways, after all of this time and kind of thinking in my mind, what would I do? What can I possibly contribute in this in this world uh if a zombie apocalypse were to happen and thinking about it i realize in the grand scheme of things i am but a small tiny little person in like the gigantic world like it takes you when i think about it it's like i'm a good you know i'm just one person in like a giant gigantic world and it takes all of us working harmoniously well trying to at least you know what I mean try to peacefully live amongst each other and especially now it's messy and it's messed up but I feel like with all of it together we kind of have a balance you know what I mean there's there's a peaceful time in our lives. And if things were to go away, if things were to go crazy all of a sudden, then, um, you know, where would I fit into it? You know, could I really, could I make a difference or could I just live for myself? And I thought about it and I said to myself, I would like to be a part of something bigger if it was given to me, but the opportunity might be, um, might be really slim. You know what I'm saying? Because let's say, for instance, right? I'm talking about like the the Walking Dead like perspective of it all. It's kind of like, okay, the military is gone. There's no real government. Half of the, you know, let's just say half of the planet is infected or turned into zombies. It's like we're we're talking about like neck and neck here. But that's still not enough. And then even after you die, you can still turn into these zombies. So it's never it's never a uh, an end to the zombie apocalypse. It's just it keeps on going and going and going. This is how life is going to be for the rest of our lives, right? Forget about medical school. Forget about any of the balance or any of the things that you know modern life has given to us, right? Forget about um. I was going to say pets, but I don't know. I, I guess you could still have a dog. It's just that they couldn't run off and I don't know. All I'm trying to say here is that like you're going to 
you're going to not be able to drive anymore. You're not going to be able to go do the the big things that we that we like to do that matter to us, right? Forget about school. Forget about uh, any kind of like, you know, air conditioning and forget all that. And then put yourself in the, and, and then I put myself in this, into the situation and I kind of tell myself like, man, you know, on the one hand, it's like, this is really watching the, the Walking Dead or like those kinds of shows or those kinds of movies. It's like, they always give it some sort of hope. There's some sort of chance, but the chance and the, and the overall, um, what's it called? The survival rate, you know, all of it put together just makes it seem... What I'm trying to say here or what I'm trying to speak on is do does my wanting to defeat the, the zombies or, or whatever outweigh the possi- my, my enjoyment of modern life, right? Because let's say the zombie outbreak happens, the zombie apocalypse starts, right? The people who die first... Yeah, it's a tragedy. You know, it's it's so sad. They they got, you know, they got the first hit of it. They didn't know what was going on. It wasn't their fault, you know. Wrong place at the wrong time. They didn't get it. But then, as opposed to the people who have lived for a long, 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 long time, right? Throughout the zombie apocalypse, it's kind of like, who has really suffered more? You know what I mean? Is it tragic that those beginning people died? Yes. But the people who have made it as far as they have and have lost so much, d- does that seem, is that, is, that a, is that a good life? Is that something that you want? And I was thinking to myself, I was like, I don't, I don't want either, you know what I mean? But if thrust into the situation, you know, like if it was a, an option in the in the world you know you throw yourself into there and see if you can make it for like i don't know a week or however long or just say it happens right i would like to test myself well i guess that's a bad way to look at it i'm just trying to say say it like not in like a real world situation because in a real world situation I'm gonna fight I'm gonna live I'm gonna I'm gonna do whatever it takes all right I'm gonna destroy I'm gonna kill as many zombies as I have to and you know what given the, and depending on the circumstances here okay I'm probably gonna have to take out some people too all right especially if they tried to kill some of my loved ones so it's all about pushing back. I feel I really do feel like if the zombie apocalypse were to happen it wouldn't be like on the movies or on TV I feel like there would be a way to that our military would be able to figure out a plan to control it and sustain it or have a have an idea of what to do in that situation right imagine if they had like a because after covid i would imagine or i would hope that they would come up with like hey guys if this stuff ever goes down if we ever have like a zombie apocalypse this is the plan and they go through each step one by one it's like all right number one we got to get the president to a quarantine safe zone so that way he can still govern and we still take his orders then after that it's we got to get the military in place so that way we have to get like these people into safe you know what i mean it, they, they would just figure out like we got to get the military into this place so that way they can actually fight the battle and understand what's going on and get as much information as we can you know what i'm saying then we keep an other extra set of uh of soldiers or or uh military trained people to to stay in reserves in case the in case the front team dies or in case unfortunate circumstances happen we have like a backup 
You know what I mean? It's like we always have like a a, a two tier level of um, of military, right? We have the A tier military that's out there on the front lines, facing the zombies, doing their thing, and then we have the the uh, the B tier, which is kind of hidden in reserves, and you'd have to be a it would have to be a large quantity of soldiers. It couldn't just be like ten to protect the president. It'd have to be like depending on our numbers, I, I would say like a hundred thousand soldiers in reserves. But they would send like the bulk of our of the the military towards um towards A tier. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying? It's like the majority of of the military would be facing the threat and then the minority of them would be held in reserves sitting back in place and you know just waiting or or in case things go bad you know what i mean that way they're they're always there's something there in in the meantime but that whole thing is just kind of for me to illustrate my point of it might not be the same thing, but I know that I could I could survive either way. So in the Walking Dead situation, it's like as soon as you kill them or as soon as you die from, like, let's say, natural causes, you still turn into one of the, the walkers. You still turn into, like, one of the zombies. So there's really – it's an endless cycle. And unless we have, like, doctors that are able to come up with a cure, then – it's never going to really work out. So, if it's like The Walking Dead, I mean, it's going to it's going to suck. But if it's anything different, you know what I mean? Like just one one hit, one uh once you kill them, you're uh, you're done. And then if you die from natural causes or if you die from anything else, you're just kind of dead. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just I have so many thoughts on this. And then I don't know agriculture would be definitely a big deal. It would be a lot of people who know how to grow things, understand crop cycles. People who have like uh cows and chickens and all those Different fruits and vegetables to, to help sustain life, you know. Unfortunately, it would have to, you know, things might, might not go perfectly. But my main focus here is that, like, I would have to adapt or I have to gain these skills in order to make it. You know, I'd, I'd grow, I'd, I'd have a potato farm, you know. That, that would be my main priority is, like, if I'm going out on, like, a... What's it called? If I'm going on a raid or like, um, oh man, what am I, a scouting? No. What's it called? On a search? Whatever. I'll just call it a search. When I'm going out for a search and I, if I find a potato, that's going to be like my main thing is that like I try to find as much food as possible, right? Hold on to it and then grow potatoes because you can live off potatoes. And with like some boiling water, you know, maybe make like a baked potato, maybe have some like little potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's my thinking. That's how I would survive. It's not like I would personally um, go out there because the hunting aspect, I don't know, dude. Because the, the zombies, they... They pretty much just eat everything. I remember there was this one time uh, in, like, The the Walking Dead where they were, like, chasing a, a horse. They were like, let's get a horse. And then the horse got eaten by zombies. And I was like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? Like, they'll just eat anything. So if I came across, like, I don't know, a possum or, like, some squirrels to eat, I would kind of be hesitant to eat them. Mainly because they are also probably infected. I don't know what the... I haven't seen any, you know, zombie dogs. So, maybe maybe they're different. I don't know. Anyways. Thinking about it, 
I that would be my main focus is I'd have to go on search raids. I'd have to um, go through people's houses and see what I can find, like flashlights, batteries, um, any kind of equipment that I could really use to protect myself. Cardboard. I remember uh, there was that movie Train to Busan. Uh, it's a great film, great movie. Maybe I should talk about it next, but um, there's that movie Train to Busan, and spoiler for the movie, all right, but when I watched the movie, the one of the guys is on the train, and he puts some cardboard on his forearms, and he wraps it up with duct tape, you know, whatever he has, and essentially what he does is um, he pushes back, and he blocks the zombies with his forearms and then other people kind of kill it or you know they they get the opportunity to stab it that would be my plan is like i'd have to find something that i can create armor to prevent them from biting me because that's the that's the bad part you know that's that's the thing that sucks is when they try to grab you and get a hold of you and they take a big chomp I, they just you know they get a good what to call it the they just get a good chunk piece out of you, you know what I mean? Rip it out. And that protection just kind of makes me a little bit braver. I don't... I would like to think that there would be a time or a location where people could come together. I mean, obviously a community would be a lot, a lot safer, a lot better, but... There's no telling with people, you know. There's no telling what what people think or what they might do or what what could possibly happen. And then you got to think about the future of the community and what could possibly happen then. How far does this really go? I am of the opinion that if somehow, right, we were in the zombie apocalypse and there was some sort of government remaining or there was anything left over we would really stick together or figure things out you know what i'm saying it would really be a lot easier to figure out okay and enough, enough about the rest of the world okay let's talk about when when you're thinking about it okay when you're thinking about this what what drives people? What pushes people to do anything, really? It's survival. What would people... What is, like, the common... What are some of people's most go-to places? And more often than not, people would go towards the ocean. They would go towards the coast. Because there's no... No zombie coming out of the water... Right, the wa you got you got water right there. You just have to kind of you know what I mean, get get rid of all the the impurities and salt and one. I mean, you can make like a um, what's it called a uh, a water filter from like rocks and sand and whatnot. But we're talking about like the ocean and the beach and fish. You know what I'm saying? Like you get you get an opportunity to to catch stuff and and get things you know what i'm saying like there's no um there's no worry about food or supplies when you're near near the ocean because you have everything you need you got the ocean right there you got water to grow vegetables it's in a and it's in a, a safe spot so everything's okay i do wonder how different life would be for people who like live on the boat you know what i mean like, imagine before the zombie apocalypse, you're like, I'm going to live on a boat. I'm going to live on the water. I'm just going to enjoy it out there. And I'm the, I am don't really want to deal with people. And then you come back to shore because you're like, I don't know, maybe you ran out of gas for your boat or maybe um, there wasn't, you know, you have to come back eventually, right? Maybe. And then you come back and it's the zombie apocalypse. You're like, what the, you know what I'm saying? You're like a little scared. That might be that might be really interesting, but anyways, the zombie apocalypse, okay? Would I try to find a cure? I mean, obviously a cure would be nice, a good way to understand like how did this all happen? But I feel like I feel like we would have all of those tools. I I really I honestly feel like we would um 
all of it would be figured out pretty quickly. You know what I mean? They would definitely protect the president. There would have to be some way to get information. We have our cell phones now, um, so we can text and we can communicate effectively. I don't. I don't really know all the specifics, but I would like to imagine, or I think that in that kind of state of emergency, there would have to be some sort of a signal or some place where information can be gathered and then communicated easily. You know what I mean? Just like a primitive source of, of direct contact and info. So it might be the, what's it called? Um, Morse code. I forget what that that technology is called when the uh, the the thing that they use to communicate with it. It's like a machine, and then they they press that. Did it? Did it? Did it? It comes out with like Morse code, and then they can piece it all together themselves like that. I don't know. I don't know. But you see what I'm saying? Like, there's there's some way to to communicate it. Long story short, well, long story long, but I'm gonna keep on going. To be real about it in the in the real world of the zombie apocalypse, I would think, obviously, it would definitely spread all across the world, but we would find a way to deal with it or find a way to get people to join your cause or to join, um, quote unquote, the military, right? It's like, we're recruiting, you have to join us and in return, we'll, we have a city, we have sanctuary, we have food, we, we, we work together, you know what I mean? And... In that, there's a chance for all of us to go back to some sort of normal life. Um, what would be really... What would be possibly... Um, I don't want to say the worst scenario. The worst scenario already happened. The zombie apocalypse happened. I'm trying to think like... How could life could never go back, you know, after the zombie apocalypse? But hey, that's that's what happens. Anyways, I was trying to do like a deep dive and like, how can we get it back? Because I was like, because I, I was just talking about how there would be no medical school. So then we'd have to start from the ground up again on how to teach doctors how to practice and then if there's nobody to teach then it's like it's so intricate that it's damn near impossible to start from the bottom up again or to like have all that documented you know what I'm saying it's it's so impossible to like become a doctor from scratch you know especially in the in the zombie apocalypse so it's like of course, it would be prioritizing uh, people who can grow food, people who can hunt, people who can um, grow crops and do stuff like that. It wouldn't be necessarily, the world would just change so much, so drastically, you know, unless a corner of the world was protected. Something was kept into the, into the line of normalcy. Is that the right word of something that's just normal? But in the zombie apocalypse, I don't know. There are too many variables, but... Okay, okay. Let's be real. I'm going to be real for a second here. Zombie apocalypse happens, okay? A lot of people are infected. The whole world is infected, okay? They're probably going to have to come... the. The world is probably going to have to come together. The world's leaders or what's left of them if they're not already dead. They're going to have to come together and they're going to have to form an alliance to destroy these things. Put our militaries together. Now, in the process, people who are still alive and if they can still get uh, reach out to people, if they're still like... I would imagine there'd be electricity for a few days maybe depending on certain circumstances... Like, um, people who have solar panels maybe can, can last a lot longer or people who, um, use other alternative energy sources like, I don't know, wind or, uh, maybe like a, a dam, you know, like they use the, the water from that. I don't know. 
But I'm just trying to say that there would be a way maybe within the next week after it starts to like get a signal to everybody that like, hey, this is happening. We're trying to figure it out. Everything's going to, you know, we're not going to say everything's going to be okay, but basically don't don't kill each other and don't lose hope, you know, fight for your survival, do what you can, and then we'll we'll help people out as, as often as we can. I feel like that would be that would be the smart play. And then they would start taking out I would like to think big cities go first cuz there's probably the ones with the or I guess they would have to focus on uh places with the biggest population. So probably start they probably might start in uh Asia to to kill out the uh the mass zombies um then they'd have to travel to, I think maybe Africa would be next. Something like that. It'd have to be, have to be that, that area. Um, because they have to, the more people they save, right? So like because of the, the bigger population, there'd be a lot more dead people, but there'd be a lot more people to probably save. And then once they save them, they can recruit them. And then once they recruit them, we can take out the, the places with the smaller populations, right? Like uh, America is not that big compared to a lot of other places. You know what I mean? It's a it's definitely a, a an important part of the world, but it's not like the the number one priority, especially in a situation like this. You know what I mean? So we help them out, they help us out, and then we take it down slowly but surely. So realistically, the zombie apocalypse might only, I would like to think, it would only take like um, a couple of, maybe like two years. And that's being generous. That's being very, that's, that's probably not going to happen. It's probably be more like five, seven, ten. It's it's looking more so along those lines, depending on how much we have to, how much we have to do, and then even after that, we still have to keep on making weapons and doing stuff. I'll tell you what, though, it's not going to be as awful. So anyways, they'd probably start in those in those places first and then eventually everything might come back to order. I don't know if um if you and I are infected per se how it could all be managed properly. It would definitely have to be a cure. A talk about how do we make a cure? Um, but that's only if we can beat all of the all of the zombies and then take care of ourselves afterwards. You know what I mean? So it's sad. It's really sad. And I also think, and I also want to put this out there, there might be a possibility that nukes are involved. Because... There might be places or things that take that happen, unfortunately, and it might be for the betterment. Oh well, I'm not saying it might be for the betterment. I'm just saying that, like, on the global scale of things that could go wrong or of everything that's gone wrong, it's probably in the interest of people who can destroy for the good of the others that are going to live but then nuclear bombs is not the answer i think just regular bombs will do just fine i also think but it might come down to that it might come down to some sort of big plan to bomb and then slowly rebuild you know what i mean i'm mainly talking about like Big cities like New York or Chicago, right? If it's like all taken over and there are slim few of them. But then how do you, how can you, you can't like do a census. You can't figure out the, um, what's it called? You can't get like a head count of how many people are alive. Unless you can. 
see this this is why the zombie apocalypse is always such a a tough situation to to put together because there's so many variables that tell you otherwise but it could happen any number of ways they could be the whole world it could be a small place it could be like one country like if if there's one country that a zombie apocalypse could happen to and like we and the whole world would kind of be like oh yeah you know that's that's awful it's probably be like antarctica you know what i mean it's like that well that's not a country it's a you you get what I'm saying? It's just like there's one place in the whole world where it's like, yeah, we could live without that. Um, is there also? I thought about this. What if, what if the zombie apocalypse was like in a small for small country or let, let's just say like a state right here in the U.S. If it was like in, I'm just going to say any random state here, all right? This is no, this is no um, prejudice to any of the other states or it's like, I don't, you know, I don't really care. But let's say it's like Texas, right? That's the second biggest state. And it's kind of has that like the border with Mexico right there. So it's like, imagine if that state by itself was overtaken by zombies and we managed to like close it off right and nobody else was sick outside of that i feel like would we be able to sacrifice it and i would say some people would some people wouldn't and then we have to decide like the right thing to do is to kind of waste the zombies and then keep them all stuck there until this whole thing comes to an end. That's that's the weird thing about the zombie apocalypse is it's like you get bit, you turn into them. Like that's those are the rules, right? But then if you're infected like they do in The Walking Dead, then it's like it never's going to end and we just have to accept that these things are just how the world you know, what happens in the world. So overall, when you're thinking about the zombie apocalypse, you really gotta you really gotta put it into perspective. You have to think of all likely scenarios and possibilities. I think about it a lot, not from like a not from like a reality standpoint, but from like a you know maybe kind of like a storytelling pers- uh, perspective or like how how so many different things can happen and change and how it all pieces together or what the the world would look like. So a show like The Walking Dead, for instance, I watch it and I kind of go like, that they, they do a great job with the, the world and like how it's all going down. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, yeah, but I just, you know, I, keep, I get kind of bored with it and it's like, it's never ending and I get it. So that way they can constantly keep fighting and keep the show interesting. But then I was like, what if, we take that aspect out and we make it actually a uh, a lot shorter, you know what I mean? Instead of making it like a 10 season series, we make it like a 3 season series and we make it possible to win or some sort of victory or like a a good conclusion to it all. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. But when you're thinking about the zombie apocalypse, you got to you got to act quick and you have to figure out as much as you can. Information is number 1 in those kinds of scenarios. It's just it, the more you know, the safer you'll be, you know what I mean? If you know that a certain location is going to be safe and protected, you have to go there. If you know that um if you know what's causing it or how to avoid it or how to like stop them, you, you go do that, right? There, there's so many things that to figure out. Or if it's like, um, if you can stay inside and hunker and stay in, indoors, right? The, you can, um, you can expect a visit from 
X, Y, and Z from like the military, and they'll they'll come and save you and help you out, and they'll 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 deal with it, right? Like it just information is key in these in this type of of moment. And I was just really thinking about this because I was constantly like, how would I handle this scenario? Like this person is doing this, they're trying to steal from me, and they almost tried to kill me, and like maybe they did kill somebody, so now I have to. It's just a, a terrible balance or, or like a terrible scenarios. But I think about it because it just it keeps me mentally sharp and makes me focus on like what would I really do? So I'm probably saying stuff that a lot of you already have thought about or have like pieced together. But I I think about the different variables, the different ways or different scenarios, you know. Because if you're in the, if you're in like New York City at the start of it, it's like you can expect an army of like so many people attacking you. You know what I mean? But if you're in like a small rural town, then you have like a, I guess a greater chance based on, you know, any number of factors. It's like, what do you grow there? Um, the food, the amount of people that are able to protect you. Is it, you know, what's the, um, what's it called? What's the lay of the land? Is it flat? So that way you can be able to like, you know what I mean? It's just, it just doesn't feel like um, there's a lot of terrain to like fight through as much as maybe more places where it's like, because I, I figure if you're in the zombie apocalypse in, let's say, Montana or you know, somewhere where there's like a lot of hills or mountains or whatnot, um, you would go up there and then that way you can kind of fight down, down the mountain every so often. Whereas if you live on like a flat land area, there's not really anywhere to go except like you're just going to stay on plateaued and you're not going to, you're not going to be able to come up with any strategic advantage other than you have weapons and you have to overwhelm the the population, I guess. But anyways, that's the zombie apocalypse. When you're thinking about the zombie apocalypse, there's so much to think about, but it's not enough to think about it. You have to you have to be ready to come up with a plan and to execute. Execution is key as well. So, anyways, think about it. You know what I mean? Do do what you gotta do. But until then, I'll talk to you guys all next time. Thank you.